All right. Hey, welcome to our second um, 15 minute interview. Uh, we're just trying to uh, get some information out to people. Today we have Erica um, here today and she'll introduce herself in the, in, here in a, in a second. But uh, I just wanted to let everybody know that on Wednesdays and Fridays at 630, we'll be releasing a video until we're done. Um, it, it's been good for me already to have interviewed one person and, um, and, and learned so much. And I hope that everybody watching is getting the same types of things. Um, we're going to move forward with Erica's interview. And so, Erica, if you could do me a favor and just introduce yourself and tell us where you're at um, to start. Hi, um, my name is Dr. Erica Essery, and I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and certified advanced alcohol and drug counselor located in the Chicagoland suburbs of Illinois. I'm also dual licensed in Iowa, and so my practice includes both in-person counseling and also online counseling. Okay, so you're doing both. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what is it exactly that you, you do? So my specialties are substance use disorders, um, as you can see from uh, my certification. And I also focus on uh, depression, especially bipolar disorder. Um, I see a lot of that in my practice. I work uh, primarily with, um, in my private practice, I work primarily with adults. I do have experience working with adolescents as well um, as an independent contractor on the side. Um, and then I also focus on uh, gender and sexually diverse people. Um, the LGBTQ community is really important to me. Um, part of that is because I'm a member of that community and I really want to make sure um, that they have accessible services. Okay, so it's, it's close to home. Um, what's the most impactful point that you make um, to, to help others. So I, I know that, you know, in, in my therapy and what I do that um, a lot of times there's sometimes a theme or something that I know I use a lot that, that comes up. What's something that you feel like, or maybe more than one impactful point that you make to help others? Um, I, of course, I think it's always really important that we talk about people supports and people support systems. And I often use this metaphor of of a chair and you know and demonstrate it with my hands if a chair only has one leg what's going to happen it's you know it's going to fall over you know two legs it's pretty rickety three legs we're starting to get some stability four or more which would be a weird looking chair but you understand where i'm going with this metaphor um the more supports you have the more stable you can become and you can rely on one of the other legs of your support if one isn't able to be with you or communicate with you at any given time. So um, really emphasizing that people need more than, you know, than one person or, um, or sometimes even more than one community in their life that can, that can help them out when they're in trouble. Right. I definitely rather sit on a chair that has 32 legs on it versus just one leg, right? Like I know I'm going to have some balance and be able to exist on that chair. Okay, very good. Um, so recommended knowledge. So like you, you, you get your knowledge from somewhere probably and there's some things that impact you um, heavily, whether it's a book or somebody you follow or any kind of podcast or documentary that, that you would recommend or video, anything that you, where we can steal some knowledge, some of the knowledge that you have. Yes, um, so I'm a huge book reader and my library's um, pretty big and I try to stay up with, um, with the latest. Um, both, I, I really enjoy reading autobiographies and people's personal experiences as well as reading things from other people in our field because I think both are important, but lived experience is really important, particularly when we're talking about, I think both addiction and also um, gender and sexual identity. So um, I think that there's always great resources on, um, on the PFLAG website. I always recommend that people go there. I think it's helpful for, um, especially for family members and loved ones to support members of the LGBTQIA community. Um, and then regarding books, boy, there's been a lot of them. I really enjoy reading, um, regarding bipolar disorder, I loved reading Kay Redfield Jameson's books. 
um, because she is not only someone in our field and is a mental health professional, but she also has lived with bipolar disorder and talks about what happened before she was diagnosed mm -hmm. and, um, and how she, she got through um, some really tough parts of her life. Okay. okay. All right. So any, any, just about anything that she writes, how many would you, would you know about how many books she, she's written or? Uh, I think she's written three books. Um, one of them is uh, Touched by Fire. Um, and um, she also talks about the creativity um, that a lot of people with bipolar disorder have and how they they often feel like they're accessing it through um, through their episodes. So um, she talks about how there are many, many historical figures that likely had mental illness of some type of their own, maybe even bipolar disorder, and how they use some of that to be able to um, create some of the wonderful pieces of, of art in their lives. Right. Okay. Uh. Um, I did want to talk about, um, as far as resources, mm -hmm. there are really great um, gender workbooks that I think are important either for people that, I mean, particularly for people that are working out their own gender identity. Um, but I think that it wouldn't hurt for people to also look through the uh, health professionals to look through those books to know what's, um, what's in them. So I would recommend um, for adults, you and your gender identity, Okay. by Dara Hoffman Fox okay. and My Gender Workbook by Kate Bornstein. Okay. Um, Dara is un, identifies as a non-binary mental health professional and Kate Bornstein is a trans woman. Okay. And then there's one out for teens called the Gender Quest Workbook yeah. that's out there. Okay. Um, and a lot of these, of course, you can get digital copies too. So if you don't want a physical book and just kind of want to look through some things um, on, you know, on a tablet or computer, you can do that as well. Okay. All right. Appreciate that. Um, super helpful resources. And that's something that we plan to be able to, to get from everybody is, is, um, things that we know will help others and that have helped us to help others. Um, okay, perfect. So I have a question, um, just talking a little bit about, um, bipolar and this is, um, you know, not something that we necessarily discussed before, but, um, what would you say it look uh, success looks like when we talk about bipolar? What's what does success look like in, in mental health? Well, of course, we're going to say that um, each individual is going to have different goals with their, you know, with their treatment, and we're also looking at the difference in severity. I mean, someone who's diagnosed as a bipolar one could have a, a main goal of. I'm lowering hospitalizations because they have a lot of them. So it could just be, you know, staying out of the hospital stability for, you know, for the first year being medication compliant, um, again, building up those support systems and, um, you know, and maybe getting additional support, not just doing individual therapy, but maybe uh, groups, um, whether they're therapy or just other support groups. Um, you know, I think that that's helpful. Uh, bipolar two folks, uh, I think, um, again, may not reach uh, the level of hospitalization necessarily, but because they struggle predominantly with the depression part mm -hmm. of bipolar disorder, I think, um, you know, checking in with um, any suicidal ideation and um, just knowing that episodes pass, knowing that that they will come out of things that they, you know, that, that these moments do end and that their moods and feelings are also transient. I, you know, I know that it really is a struggle when they say, well, I've been in a depressive episode for months and, and months, but you know, there are, there are moments of, you know, there are moments of respite and trying to um, figure out how to do their best during those times, um, including sometimes seeing the signs that they're about to enter into an episode two. I think identifying where they know that they're at so that they can put some procedures in place to, um, to help get them through it, whether it's 
you know, manic or hypomanic episode or, or depression, a lot of times people after a while can say, I can feel it coming on. And it's like, well, if you know that that's happening, what can we do to give you the best chance to get through this with, um, you know, minimal turmoil? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a huge thing. I think throughout, um, you know, uh, I guess in healing in general is being able to recognize first what's going on. Right. And then being able to to follow what it is that we need to do to stay in the place that we want to be. So, okay. Um, so this one, I, I'm going to combine two. So uh, I, I want a story really and, and or a challenge uh, or homework that we can give our audience to, to, to have and take with them. Um, I think regarding the gender piece, I always uh, want to ask people, um, to try and be aware of how much they are gendering people, how often it's happening, and the assumptions that we make about other people's genders. Because um, the more sensitive and a, you know an acknowledgement we can give to it, the more attention we give to it, the more um, we can be sensitive to clients coming in where you don't know, they might be questioning their gender identity. That might not be what they came in for, mm -hmm. but that those thoughts could be rolling around in their head. And if they go to someone who, um, you know, is, is open and, um, you know, and affirming, they might feel that they can bring that up in addition to whatever else they want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, so another challenge is, for example, looking at your paperwork as a mental health professional, do you have an option for, for gender, for transgender or other or a non-binary? Um, do you have a write-in option, maybe even for your paperwork so people can definitely find the term that, that they identify with best? Um, do you have a space for preferred name? Um, or or a nickname. Um, a lot of places now, even in EHRs, because I have an electronic health record, there's a space that's called nickname, and I can put someone's name in there. And then I still have their legal name for insurance purposes on their on their paperwork. But when anything gets sent out from me, their name is what they see. They don't see their legal name if they're not going by it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, and so uh, that's on the on the um, the clinician side of things. What about for the person who comes in and doesn't see um, what's necessary to get the help? Do you have any recommendations or any kind of uh, um, help for them to be able to 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 look past that and or um, get to the next um, step to being able to get the help that they need? Um. You mean for a, a potential client? Yeah, for a potential in? client coming in maybe and, and um, who is dealing with something related to gender and maybe they don't even identify it initially, but they don't get that response um, that they probably should or, or that would be helpful to them. Uh, I think it's always important as with, um, as with any reason you might find yourself seeking a therapist to always do some homework on the therapist and ask them, you know, ask them questions, look at what their background is. You know, do they, do they talk about um, being affirming of gender and sexually diverse people? Um, ask them if they have worked with clients um, and if they're looking for things on, on their own, um, plenty of useful websites and groups. I know a lot of people are in um, Facebook groups or on Reddit in certain subthreads, getting questions answered about gender. So many of my clients watch YouTube videos, of course, for free, and they can look at people's gender experiences and see that they, if they have some thoughts about, oh, I have to be this way or I have to be that way, that that's, that that's not true, that you can figure out what your identity is and your presentation could be different from your identity. And there's just a lot of, there's a lot of freedom, a lot more freedom than I think some people realize. They don't have to feel stuck in some type of stereotype. Yeah, I really like that idea. Yeah, the idea that, that there is not the lines necessarily that everybody else is creating that has to shape who we are, right? So, mm -hmm. all right, I appreciate that. Um, is there any, anything else that you wanted to include um, in, in being able to share with others before we close? 
Um, well, aside from, again, just uh, people, always, whether you're someone seeking therapy or whether you're a therapist looking for another therapist who has you know, a specialty, um, please reach out to us because uh, I really love to answer questions. I love to help people. Um, you know, whether or not someone even becomes a client, I, I really enjoy like helping them navigate insurance or getting to the right professional. For instance, sometimes people call me and say, do you prescribe medication or I'm looking for medication? And I said, I, I know that you're looking for that. You want a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. Um, and while I can't provide that for you, tell me where you are and let me see if I can connect you with someone in the area. So if you can, uh, if, if you either want to ask those questions, please do. We want to answer. Or if you're on the clinician side, if you can develop a network of people you can trust that provide services um, that you don't, such as medication management, I think that that's really key because clients are going to ask you those questions. They're going to they're going to want to know where else to go to get all of their needs met. Absolutely. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, so I, I want to close by saying I really appreciate your time. Thank you for taking time out of your day um, to come share with us and and um, to to kind of spread the spread the knowledge around a little bit. So thank you so much. Um, we'll be back with another fifteen um, minute interview um, pretty soon here. So again, Wednesdays and Fridays at six thirty, we'll be release, releasing these until we're done. Um, thank you all for your time and have a good okay. Day.